Now that we've got our piece built and the rusty texture is on there along with some weld lines, it's time to go ahead and paint on the actual rust effects of the piece. So in the first tutorial here we're going to focus on the actual technique that you're going to use and I'm going to go over some of the pitfalls and some of the lessons learned. So the first thing you're going to want to do is practice. Practice a lot. If you can learn how to paint the rust effects on flat pieces of foam board, then you'll be doing just fine when it comes to painting an actual train piece. Another advantage of practicing on foam board is you'll have plenty of pieces to experiment with and figure out what works. On this piece I did a couple different varnishes. I did a satin varnish and a gloss and then I experimented with the order of which I applied the washes and the chip paint effects. All you do is write on the back with a sharpie marker and you'll always be able to remember how you accomplish certain effects. To paint the rust effects you're going to need a few different types of sponges. The first sponge is a drywall sponge or a tiling sponge. You can find this at just about any home improvement store. You want to find one that has very large openings, very large cells. It makes painting the rust effects very easy and not as tricky as the finer cell foam. The next type of sponge that you're going to want to get is a standard dishwashing sponge. And finally, we're going to need the good old blister foam. I know a lot of people use these for painting rust on miniatures, and they work well on small pieces, but they're very challenging on larger pieces. The only time I actually use blister foam on a train piece is on very flat panels, and I use it to obtain shadows and small chipped effects, and also to bring out some exposed metal sections. The Orc Mech Shop here kind of demonstrates the type of effect that you'll get when you finish your terrain piece with the blister foam and use it to apply black and silver. So let's go ahead and use all three types of foam here. We're going to go ahead and start with the blister foam. Even though I won't be using it on the main terrain piece for this tutorial, I think it's important to show you how to use it and more importantly how not to overuse this technique. So when you apply this, you want to make sure there is very little paint on the actual sponge and then use a very light touch. When you practice, you'll quickly realize that this technique requires your full attention and is fairly time consuming since you can only apply a little bit of paint at a time. That's the primary reason why I don't use this much when I'm painting my train pieces since generally you're working on a very large piece and you just like to get some paint on it quite quickly. When you use the blister foam, this is the type of effect that you're going to go for. And this is the effect on an actual rusty panel. The main thing you want to do is not to apply too much paint or you'll get a stamped effect like this. As you can see, I had too much paint when I applied the silver and it just doesn't quite look right. Now I'll go ahead and show you what happens if you overdo it with the blister foam. As you can see what happens is you start to lose the individual blotches of paint. I went ahead and used black and white paint here so that you can really see what I'm talking about. If you over apply the paint it will actually start to gray and you won't be able to see the individual patterns that you're shooting for with the rust effect. As you can see here, the paint has gotten very splotchy and it doesn't look very good. It almost looks more like a smudge than little individual shadows that you'd like to see on your terrain piece. Just keep practicing and you'll get the hang of it. Eventually I plan to add some armor panels to my orc gate here and when I do that I'll go ahead and make a tutorial. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. So now let's move on and go ahead and use the dishwashing sponge here. You want to hit it with a little bit of water to free up the fibers in the sponge and then squeeze out the excess. You can go ahead and add a little bit more paint this time and you don't have to be quite as delicate when you apply it. It's one of the reasons why I like to use this for my train pieces because as you can see you can apply paint much much faster than with the blister foam and you don't have to worry about the stamped effect or controlling how much paint is on the sponge nearly as much as with the previous method. As you can see I'll be more generous when I'm using the dishwasher sponge than with the blister foam. The reason for this is that I'm building up layers with the dishwasher sponge Whereas with the blister foam, I'm doing more of a highlight, only one very small bits of color. 
So finally, let's go ahead and move on and use the tile sponge or the drywall sponge that we got from the home improvement store. As you can see here, it sucks up a lot of paint very quickly and it does not apply the stamped or the splotchy effect that you would with the blister foam. In fact, you'll go through paint very quickly and your rust effects on your train piece will happen very fast. You'll find that this will definitely be your workhorse when it comes to the rust effects. As you'll see in the next part of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and apply multiple layers of color to get the correct effect. And the speed at which you can apply paint with this sponge, you'll really appreciate. So this will be the effect that you end up with. Remember the key to this sponge is learning how to use it quickly so that you can apply the colors in a fast manner and get that train piece built and on your table. So now let's go ahead and move on to part two of the tutorial here and learn what paint and colors we're going to use and how we're going to apply them with the various sponges to obtain the rust effect that we want.